This is a story of how one man defied the bureaucracy and saved hundreds of locally employed staff at the consulate in Kanto, just as Vietnam was about to fall. The shaky peace that had held in Vietnam since the signing of the Paris Peace Accords in 1973 began to crumble in late 1974 after the North Vietnamese began to push back the South Vietnamese army. By early 1975, it had become obvious that there would not be two Vietnams, as with Korea, but that the South would soon fall. Despite this, Ambassador Graham Martin refused to believe a collapse was imminent and had stalled in authorizing evacuation plans. Terry McNamara, the Consul General in Kanto, was one of those dismayed by Ambassador Martin's inaction. The only evac plan that existed for Kanto involved closing up shop and then driving to Saigon, which was problematic for a number of reasons. Evacuation by helicopter out of Kanto proved to be unworkable given the sheer number of people and landing zones involved. McNamara concluded the only viable option that could save the many Vietnamese staffers and their families would be down the river to the sea. The CIA and many military officials argued against the river plan as being too dangerous. Oddly enough, no U.S. naval officials opposed it. The Viet Cong had no navy to speak of, and the Mekong was uh, too wide to fully blockade. One colleague of McNamara's over at USAID, the Agency for International Development, offered two LCMs, or landing craft mechanized, which were lightly armored landing barges and Vietnamese crews. He then arranged with the Navy and Marine reps at the embassy to provide a ship to meet them at the mouth of the river. McNamara learned that in the evacuation at the consulate in Na Trang, panic struck, even though the Viet Cong were not even in the city, and they lost several people they had wanted to save. By late April, most Americans and all CIA staff and assets had been evacuated from Kanto. On April 29, Embassy Saigon issued the order to evacuate fully. They told McNamara they would be evacuated by three Air American helicopters and that only Americans would be allowed on. No Vietnamese were to be let on board. Though the embassy didn't initially approve of the river evacuation, McNamara convinced them that since helicopters were now scarce, Saigon would need as many as they could get. The embassy reluctantly agreed. The plan was now in effect. As it turned out, helicopters were never sent back to Saigon, and many of the people waiting on rooftops were abandoned. Follow us for the exciting conclusion.